So now that I've officially started college, I've been looking all over my university for some of my favorite animals, and one of the main animals I've been hoping to find has been the coyote, and it got me wondering, how the heck have these coyotes been able to colonize so much of North America in such little time? After all, they could be found everywhere from the city all the way to the Great Plains. Well, this video is going to try to answer that question and reveal plenty more of the coyote's amazing adaptable secrets. So let's cue the intro. Illegals in my yard. Ouch. Illegals in my yard. Ow. Ow. Illegals in my yard. Throw them some pesos and they work so hard. Illegals in my yard. Illegals in my yard. Illegals in my yard. I don't even ask if they got green card. They're gonna pave up my driveway this Christmas. They're gonna clean all my cars this Christmas. They're gonna shovel all the snow this Christmas. Those illegals in my yard. <laughs> Despite being considered a pest by some, others consider the coyote to be a symbol of the United States. In other words, this is definitely one controversial animal. The main, but not only, reason for why the coyotes are so controversial is the fact that they're relatively new to most of North America. And while they did originally live throughout the continental United States during the last ice age, when Europeans first arrived in North America, the coyotes were mainly restricted to the plains of Mexico, the central United States, and at most southern Canada. This would all change when settlers from the old world began to arrive. While the Europeans did consider all canines to be a pest, mainly due to the fact that they would end up preying on their livestock, the Europeans would also end up changing the landscape and food web of these ecosystems forever, indirectly changing things in the coyotes' favor. This is ironic as most of the Europeans simply wanted the coyotes out of their lands. Just like the gray and red wolf, the coyotes were also seen as nuisances that were deemed dangerous to farmers and their cattle, even though in actuality, no canis species considers humans to be a viable food source. Regardless though, the coyote, eastern wolf, gray wolf, and red wolf were all systematically killed, being wiped out in the vast majority of their range, and while the coyotes' numbers did go down during this time, they did not decline nearly to the same levels that all the other wolf species did. And yes, technically coyotes are kinda sorta wolves. The term wolf is confusing, but that's a whole video for another day. Okay, getting back on track, so why were the coyotes able to survive while all the other canis species went extinct or became incredibly rare? The main reason is actually pretty interesting. While coyotes are smaller than the other wolf species, they are also the most adaptable by far, having an omnivorous diet and being capable of surviving in a variety of different habitats, with plains and wide open spaces being their ideal habitat, though they could also survive pretty much anywhere, as seen by their original range, which ranged all the way up from southern Canada all the way down into central Mexico which includes a variety of different habitats and temperatures, but also a diverse amount of food sources as well, as unlike the other canis species, coyotes are overall omnivorous, having a diet only about 65 to 75% meat, with the rest being substituted mostly by a variety of different berries, fruits, and even grasses. They will also gladly scavenge and eat garbage, just like raccoons, which is probably why these medium-sized mammals do so well in the city, but we'll get to that later. But despite what a lot of people believe, coyotes do not prey on humans. Neither does any other North American wolf species for that matter. Over the past 300 years, there's only been two fatal documented coyote attacks ever. For comparison, there's about 25 to 50 fatal dog attacks each and every year in the United States alone. But sadly, the European colonizers that first went to the US did not know or care about this fact. And because of that, each of the four main canis species were killed off one by one throughout the United States, with the largest species being targeted the most as they were considered to be the biggest threats and also the biggest trophies. And while coyotes were still targeted, the larger wolf species were definitely targeted to a larger extent. Regardless though, while the coyotes' populations would initially begin to decline, they had a very unique way of combating this problem. One thing which makes the coyote one of the most adaptable animals ever, besides its ability to handle a variety of different habitats and climates, is the fact that they could selectively choose how many pups they could produce, depending on how plentiful resources are in the area and how often the coyotes are being killed off. In habitats where coyotes are sparsely populated and there's still a bunch of resources, coyotes will produce more pups. 
But in habitats where there's plenty of coyotes, the coyotes will produce less pups in order to avoid competition with each other. The coyotes actually have a way of knowing how many coyotes are around in the area, because oftentimes when a coyote is killed, they will call out to each other notifying all the other coyotes in the area that a member has been killed and that they should be cautious, allowing the coyotes to adapt faster and also know how many pups they should be producing. And when a population gets overcrowded, the coyotes on top of being able to produce less pups also have the option of expanding their range, which is what occurred shortly after most of the other canis species were wiped out. So when the coyote's main predator, and also competitor, the gray wolf, was killed off, the coyotes were able to expand very easily. As despite the settlers trying to kill off the coyotes, the gray wolves that were around would kill them off way more often, meaning that the coyotes had a much lower mortality rate and much more resources and territory to take advantage of. And this was only helped by the large amount of deforestation that would occur on the North American continent, which created more grassland habitat, which tends to be favored by coyotes. And a not ideal for wolves. And for these reasons, on top of the absence of other predators, such as the brown bear and cougar, which were becoming increasingly rare or extinct in most of their range, the coyotes were able to spread incredibly rapidly. And in only 200 years, they were able to spread from southern Canada all the way to central Alaska and all the way from the central plains of the United States to the entire east coast of the United States. And now they could be found in 49 of the 50 states and now they could even be found as far south as Panama, with the possibility of them expanding into South America becoming increasingly likely. So on top of all the other habitats they were originally found in, now they could also be found everywhere from the jungles in Central America to the tundra of Alaska. And that's not even getting into the main problem which a lot of people have been complaining about. That being that the coyotes have now expanded into cities across the United States, from New York City all the way to Chicago, and even right here in Palm Beach County, where people regularly sight coyotes only a few miles from my house. And even as stated earlier in this video on my college campus, and while these coyotes don't normally attack people, they do often attack pets. Any small dog or cat is on the menu for these coyotes, which is why you always gotta be careful with how you keep your pets while in coyote territory, in which coyote territory can include almost every single biome imaginable, including the city. As unlike wolves, coyotes don't need a large amount of territory in order to survive, and depending on the situation, they could either be in packs as large as 20, or simply just be solo or found in pairs. Though with most subspecies of coyote, they are most commonly found in small, loosely packed family units. The main reason for why there's such large variation in how these coyotes live is due to how the coyotes initially spread across the Americas. As the different wolf species were declining in numbers, the coyotes would end up taking up the niche of top predator in those areas, and in turn the few wolves that were left didn't have enough wolves around to sustain a breeding population and instead would end up breeding with the coyotes. Because of this, the coyotes now have over 17 different recognized subspecies and were able to evolve rapidly, mainly due to the additional genetic variation being added by hybridization with the different wolf species across the Americas that were dying off. This is why so many different subspecies of coyote have been able to evolve so quickly within only the past few hundred years. And it's also why certain subspecies, such as the eastern coyote, tend to get a lot larger than their western counterparts. This is also why in places where the coyotes would end up replacing the wolves, there is a lot more individual morphological variation due to the hybridization of coyotes with the remaining wolves before they were entirely wiped out. This is why certain traits such as melanistic coyotes and coyotes with incredibly thick coats of fur exist. Still, these traits don't make them coy wolves. As true, eastern coyotes, in addition to other subspecies, only have trace DNA of the wolf and feral dog species that once roamed these areas. Now I'm going to take a little break to tell you if you're enjoying this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe because YouTube's how I make my money. So please feel free to support my channel. Still, every subspecies of coyote is still classified as a true coyote under Canis latarensis. A good comparison would actually be with humans, where different races of humans happen to have trace DNA from some of their other hominid ancestors. A great example of this could be how some populations of European actually have as much as 5% Neanderthal DNA, yet we're still all considered humans. 
Despite what a lot of people believe, hybridization is actually a natural process for a lot of wild animals. But what's not natural is for hybridization to occur on a regular basis, leading to certain species being outcompeted, such as what we've seen with red wolves with some of their attempted reintroduction programs, where the coyotes would essentially breed with the red wolves, decreasing the genetic uniqueness of the red wolf population as a result. And while the coyotes don't exactly target other individuals for hybridization, they will gladly hybridize with any other wolf species, assuming the wolf doesn't have any other options for a mate meaning that the wolf was either injured, or if their population's really that low, there simply aren't enough mates to go around, leading to the wolves having no choice but to breed with the coyotes. And while this is way more common with eastern timber wolves and the red wolf, as they are more closely related to the coyote, this could also occur with gray wolves and even dogs in some rare cases, as koi dogs do exist and have been found both in the wild and in captivity. While their ability to hybridize has allowed for the coyotes to adapt faster and spread across the United States with even more ease, it has also allowed for the coyotes to successfully wipe out even more of the native canis species across their new range. And this is one of the reasons why it is debated if the coyotes are an invasive species or not, as they do tend to outcompete some of the other more established canine species, both through breeding and also just through competition with prey sources. As yeah, even though the coyotes weren't directly introduced throughout the entire North American continent because of humans, they have been able to quadruple their entire range as an indirect result of human activity. For that reason, most people consider the coyotes to be a naturalized species, meaning that they simply traveled over here through natural expansion, even though that isn't entirely the case. Even though coyotes don't belong as far south as Panama and as far north as Alaska, despite what a lot of people may claim, the coyotes can still have some huge benefits to some of the habitats in which they've reclaimed. A great example of this can be observed in the states of Pennsylvania and in New Jersey, where the entire wolf population of those states has been wiped out, and shortly after their extinction, the coyotes came in and took over their niche. But unlike a lot of the other places where the coyotes would outcompete the other predators, there simply were no predators in these states. And for that reason, the deer population would explode, leading to a pandemic of Lyme disease throughout both states and the deers essentially wreaking havoc on the ecosystem as there weren't enough human hunters going after the deer or enough animal predators making a significant impact on the deer population. So naturally, when the coyotes finally entered these states, they actually did a huge help by helping to decrease the native deer populations. As yet, Anyone who's been to the more rural areas of these states knows that there's way too much deer, and for as much as I love them, their populations need to be controlled. And while coyotes have mainly evolved to eat smaller animals, they will still gladly go after deer, especially in ecosystems where they don't have to compete with wolves, but instead have over time evolved to become larger and replace their niche. And in places such as New Jersey, while it would be much better to reintroduce wolves successfully, in a lot of cases this is impossible due to budgetary concerns and also concerns by the local residents. So for that reason, I believe the coyotes are a very nice alternative to have in the state. As while they aren't native in the traditional sense, they are still able to fill in the necessary role of top predator in New Jersey's respective ecosystem, meaning that they are a huge benefit overall to New Jersey's wildlife. But it should be kept in mind that the coyotes could be detrimental towards destroying an ecosystem in other habitats, where they happen to outcompete some of the other wildlife when they are introduced. Overall, the coyote is not an evil or a good creature, it's just an animal trying to find its place in the world. And now that they've expanded across the entire North American continent, I think it's about time we need to learn how to deal with this incredibly adaptable and unique animal. The best way to do this is by making an effort to educate yourself and the general public about the importance and also problems that come with having coyotes in your local area. As while coyotes don't normally attack people, there still have been plenty of reports of them attacking children, and it's still a medium-sized predator with a bite force of up to 750 psi. So overall, coyotes still should be taken seriously, and for that reason you should not feed coyotes your pets or garbage. The coyotes don't normally want anything to deal with people, so just leave them alone. And as long as you leave them alone, they should leave you alone as well. And of course, you gotta be careful of securing your pets indoors at all times, because the coyotes will gladly gobble them up.
And while rare, coyotes could also carry mange and rabies, which could be harmful towards your pets and yourself if you aren't careful. So if you see a drooling or a hairless chupacabra looking coyote, then please report it to your local wildlife agency so they could handle it appropriately. And also keep in mind that just because there's coyotes in your area doesn't mean you're going to see them. Coyotes have an incredibly good sense of smell, which allows for them to detect you from over a mile away, so they could figure out how to avoid you really easily, and coyotes are also normally nocturnal, meaning that your odds of seeing them in the daytime, especially in the city, is incredibly low. So just be mindful of that next time you're wandering around. And also if a coyote does approach you, then please be cautious and know how to haze it off. You could haze off a coyote by simply yelling at it or throwing things at it, or if you have bear spray or mace, then just use that. As stated for the one billionth time, coyotes don't normally see people as food, and for that reason they are normally pretty easy to scare off. And in places where wolf reintroduction programs are occurring, then please be a kind citizen and feel free to support these groups, as the wolves are also just as if not more important to the ecosystem than the coyotes, as the wolves are a natural top predator of all of North America's ecosystems regardless of if the coyotes belong there or not. So assuming you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe as I try to make animal mini documentaries on a weekly basis, and I'd love to make more canine videos in the future. So I really hope you learned something about these incredible creatures, and a thank you for your AdSense money. Goodbye.